Hello. My name is Poppy Hayseed. This is the story of Omar Madison Kim, the People's Congressman. This is an abridged telling of the unpublished graduate thesis developed by Deloitte J. Guth, in pursuit of his master's degree in history in 1963 from Creighton University. Chapter 28 Fusion When convention time arrived in 1894, Congressman Omar Madison Kim found himself caught between the diminishing political strength of his own party and a revitalized Republican opposition. As early as 1892, his populist colleague in the House, William McKagan, had been forced to run as a populist Democrat fusionist. In that same election, the Republicans had been able to recapture control of the Nebraska state legislature, even though a coalition of Democrats and populists could have defeated them. Thus, by 1894, Omer Kim had developed serious doubts about running for a third term on the populist ticket. He did not attend the populist congressional convention in the 6th district, even though it was held in his hometown of Broken Bow, during a congressional recess. Nevertheless, Kim still received the nomination, but not until a rival candidate, William Green, had openly canvassed the delegates on his own behalf. For the first time, Omer Kim did not receive his populist nomination by acclamation and without opposition. Kim accepted the opportunity for a third term, but did so with an announcement that he would campaign as a fusionist and populist. One month later, on September 2, the Democrats met at Broken Bow for their congressional convention and cleared the way for an endorsement of Congressman Kim by turning the decision over to a five-man committee. This group was to decide between nominating a Democratic candidate or endorsing the incumbent congressman. The chairman of this committee sent his personal assurances to Brian that we will formally nominate him, Kim, as soon as the proper papers can be arranged. Eleven days later, the Democratic Nominating Committee completely endorsed Omer Madison Kim for a third term in Congress, thus consummating the bid for fusion, which Kim had made after his populist nomination. As Kim saw it, the Democrats, who had little strength in western Nebraska, had fused behind him as a moderate populist. The immediate goal for both parties, as announced in the Democratic press, was to defeat the Republicans. In Nebraska's 6th Congressional District, two-term incumbent congressman, Omer Madison Kim, was the most likely man to do the job. The ensuing campaign was Kim's final battle in Nebraska politics, and he applied himself with his usual vigor. Thanks to Kim's commitment to fusion, his only opponent of note was the Republican nominee, Matthew Dougherty. Kim debated with Dougherty in a series of public meetings held throughout the 6th District. Kim's Republican opponent, imparted a certain note of confusion to the debates, and to the campaign in general, by supporting the free coinage of silver at a ratio of 16 to 1. As a Republican, Kim's opponent evidently knew that he would fast become a political corpse, unless he could meet Kim head-on over the issue of financial reform. Despite Dougherty's desperate campaign tactic, Kim retained the fealty of the farmers. Kim clashed with his opponent on the financial issue and soundly attacked him for Republican protectionism on the question of the tariff. Kim had the support of the state organ of the Alliance Populist Movement, which went so far as to publish a full-page eulogy and summary of Congressman Kim's career in Washington. Once more, Omer Kim presided over Alliance picnics held in his honor. Near the close of the campaign, Omer Madison Kim participated in a day-long tribute to him given by the people of his own Custer County. Best of all for Kim, he received a comfortable majority on Election Day, obtaining 17,077 votes to the 14,676 cast for his Republican opponent. Omer Kim won only one more county than did Dougherty. But he ran so well throughout the 6th District that he did not lose a single county by more than 90 votes. But, even though victorious for the third straight time, Congressman Kim soon had a new political problem to face. In the aftermath of the election of 1894, a political feud arose in which Omer Kim lost much of his political control in his home county. In the early summer of 1893, an anti-Kim faction gained control of the Custer County Alliance populist machinery, 
and nominated its members for the county positions to be filled in November of 1895. Omar Madison Kim not only protested the action, but he actively campaigned for several weeks in the fall against two of the men nominated. One of the men he opposed was William Green, the candidate for county judge and the man who had unsuccessfully tried for the nomination to Kim's seat in Congress in 1894. In the end, his opponents won out, leaving Omar Madison Kim and his supporters in political purgatory. An alliance rally, held in Broken Bow, to ratify the election victory, passed resolutions condemning Kim's betrayal, and declared that the Custer County Party would no longer be held responsible for his official acts. Thus, Kim had a glaring political reality staring him in the face, providing one more reason for him to ponder his political future with misgivings. Nevertheless, Congressman Kim continued to assert his righteousness in having opposed his own party's candidates. He claimed that his opponents had sought public office only for personal aggrandizement. And, for the first and only time, the local Republican press wholeheartedly supported Kim and complimented him for his conscientious convictions to duty. In his reply to the Custer County resolutions, Kim defended his actions as the true position necessary to maintain sacred populist principles. Furthermore, if being a good populist meant stultifying myself, by supporting men for office whom I know are not fit for it, then I do not want to be a populist in good standing. Kim then proudly declared, I would rather be right, than the chief of any party. Although the local group ultimately dropped its assertions and gave its congressman nominal support, the feud had marked the beginning of the end of agrarian unity on Kim's behalf. Omar Madison Kim had characterized his opponents as opportunists, who hid behind the guise of populist principles. But now, Kim himself, had become vulnerable to similar criticism for his fusion with one of the despised old parties. Kim's growing political weakness may well have been the deciding factor in his decision to make this his last term in Congress. Can you believe it? We've reached the end of another chapter in our story, Omar Madison Kim, the People's Congressman. Please click the link in the comment section below to move to the next video. You won't want to miss what happens next. Thanks again for watching and listening, I'm your narrator, Poppy Hayes Seed, saying so long for now.